Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm, my name is Jason. This is Old Car Auto Guy. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will know that I put a poll up the other day that said, is grandma too old for a turbo? Stay tuned. So after I posed that question, I got to thinking, and I got to thinking, I googled and got to thinking even more, and then I realized, although a cheap eBay turbo may only be a few hundred bucks, the cost of getting it in the car can somewhat be a little bit astronomical. Well, that might be too large of a term to use, but nevertheless, I don't really think I'm quite ready to invest say two thousand dollars into putting a turbo into this car at least not yet so here are a couple of things that I'm going to work on to boost a little bit of horsepower in this car without power adders so the very first thing that I'm going to do that a lot of guys recommend who own these Panthers is to get rid of this and put in a cold air intake. The second thing that they recommend is putting a spacer between your throttle body and your intake. Thirdly, is to replace the stock intake with an aftermarket one. Now as far as number four, I've already got that looked after and that is exhaust. Well, I've got it partly looked after. I haven't done anything with the cats, but they do say to remove the cats or hollow out the cats. I'm not gonna go that far. I'm gonna do about half of that and hollow out the rear cats. And then last but not least, they always say to change the gears in the rear end. Again, I don't think I'm gonna go that far, um, but who knows? I really don't want to ruin the 23, 24 miles per gallon that I'm getting with this car. Um, it is just a daily driver, but I would like it to perform a little bit better. So in this particular instance, I've set a budget of $250 to get everything looked after that I just mentioned to you. And I don't think that that's too unobtainable of a goal. Cold air intakes, you can get those fairly cheap with the filter. Also the intakes, um, you can go and buy aftermarket intakes to fit on these 4.6s uh, for about a hundred bucks. And uh, I'll replace a few of uh, the hoses and different things like that while I'm in there. I may even see what's out there for used intakes off of say an HO Mustang or something like that. That might push me over that $250 limit, but we'll see what's out there. So I'm gonna go hop on eBay right now on Amazon and see what we can get our hands on. One hour later. And as suspected, all those parts are way more expensive than I thought, and 250 bucks is not gonna get me a whole lot. However, I did order the throttle body spacer, the one inch spacer that goes between the throttle plate and the intake as well as I ordered a high flow air filter. Now it's not a cold air intake, it's just a high flow, so it's gonna flow a little bit more air. I've also got some parts for a tune-up, uh, so spark plugs, I'm gonna see if I can find some, some new coils, and uh, we'll get that stuff done, and uh, fuel filter, stuff like that, and hopes that we can just get this thing working a little bit more optimum, and maybe sneak a few more ponies out of it, and uh, I don't know, maybe a few, uh, points of a mile per gallon or something like that. Nevertheless, we're gonna just do a little bit of uh, maintenance on it and uh, seeing how I've had this thing for over a month now and I haven't even touched it. Uh, so fuel filter, uh, spark plugs, coil, the high flow air filter, as well as the spacer. So we're gonna do that. We're also going to modify the rear catalytic converters on that car. Uh, we're gonna start by possibly drilling out the centers with maybe a three quarter inch drill bit and see what the sound uh, is like after that. If I still find that it's too, I don't know, mellow, then maybe we'll go a little bit bigger. Again, if it's too mellow, then we'll probably end up going with a complete punching out of the whole entire system uh, on those rear cats. So those parts are on order and for now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the car back into the shop, get it up in the air, drop that H pipe in the front and we're gonna drill out those casts. So that's what's coming up next. 
Okay, so we've made it inside and we've got the car up on the hoist and what we're going to be doing is basically creating a lesser path of resistance in the catalytic converters. So if you don't know what is inside of a catalytic converter, let me show you. So here is a cat that we took out of another vehicle. If you can see inside, you've got all them little squares. Well, that's your catalytic converter material inside that is so expensive. If I shine it in there, you can see what it is. And just to give you an idea of how much exhaust gets trapped inside these, I'm going to take this flashlight, you see how bright it is, and we're going to shine it inside. And right there is all you can see of that flashlight. Now I'll move it around a little bit so maybe you get it better. But There's a lot of restriction in those casts. Do they do the environment good? Absolutely. Do you need four of them on a car? Not quite thinking so, but nevertheless, if we take a look at this uh, Grand Marquis, you'll see that there's one here on the right side, same here on the left, and as we get up in here, there's another one right here and right here. We're leaving these front ones alone, and we're coming back to these rear ones, and we're in hopes that we can get something a drill bit long enough or, or whatever we're gonna try and do to hollow out those cats a little bit on both sides and make it breathe a little bit better and hopefully get a little more sound out of it. And yes, by the way, my new center caps came in and they're Mustang, but I like these better. They got a little bit of chrome, a little bit of black. They've even got a pony on it. So this is where I started to explain that I had already punched out the cats with a drill bit and now that we've got all that loose material inside the cats, we now have to start the car and blow that mass out of there. And this was probably the best part of the whole video. Now watch when I start it, the initial startup blows a lot of it out. And this is where I start revving it two or three times just to get all that crap out of there. And uh, I got to admit, it sounded really really good so I figured while I'm under here uh, one more time I'm gonna replace this fuel filter doesn't look like it's been done in a while so it's pretty simple we've got a hose clamp kind of holding it into place and a couple of these little lock nylon lock thingy majiggers that uh, just kind of hold it in place so I'm gonna loosen this up slide it back and then we should be able to pull those lines off And of course, there's gonna be gas flying everywhere here, so if you're a smoker, now's the time to put your cigarette out. Because she's gonna be under pressure. And it's warm. So we got one end off, now to get the other end. So now that we've got this out, I wanted to show you the difference between the, the fuel going in and the fuel coming out. So the fuel going in is fairly clear. The fuel coming out is quite cloudy and dirty. And in fact, if you look inside there, you'll see how much, how much fuel has come out of it and uh, just how dirty it is. So we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. We'll let the car down and uh, see how she sounds. Still not sure that I'm convinced that it's loud enough, but now we're going to take it for a drive and see if we can hear a difference from inside the vehicle. So 
now let's try it inside the car as we take off. Still not sold. A little bit louder. Well guys, I'm still not convinced. Like I said before, I think probably the right way to get those cats cleaned out is gonna to be to take that, um, take that pipe right down off the car and get it on the bench. Start beating the crap out of it and uh, making sure all of that stuff is gutted out in order for us to make some sound out of it. So that might be a project for another day. Not today, it's a little hot and muggy. Uh, so we got the uh, exhaust kind of looked after. I had to put a couple of gaskets in place on that H-pipe anyway, and uh, I figured I'd change the fuel filter while we were under there. So that will wrap up this video. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed it and understand exactly where I'm coming from with this build. It is truly a budget build, so I don't want to be putting thousands of dollars uh, into this thing on a car that already has you know 200,000 clicks on it, but the car looks like it's in really good shape. So maybe someday uh, down the road, we'll talk about maybe doing some sort of a turbo or pro charger or something along those lines, maybe even a supercharger. I don't know. Superchargers are probably the easiest in the fact that it's almost a direct bolt on on the top of the engine, but as a rule, they're the more costly of the three. So something to look at down the road. Who knows what grandma might become? Maybe she'll find the fountain of youth after all. Anyways, keep in mind guys that this video is sponsored by Sussex Beard Oil. I will always keep their link in the description box below. Please check them out at sussexbeard.com. Thursday nights is the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. If you missed it last week on Straight Six Fans channel, it'll be on my channel this coming week. So if you're not subscribed, I would encourage you hit that subscribe button right now and the bell notification that way you get notified every time I upload a new video or any time that I go live. Guys, I end every video by saying stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.